Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. morphological structure of the gametophyte of funeria. Now we will talk about the sex organs which are present at the tip of the male branch. So when we make the gametophyte, we made these rhizoids and there were two branches. One is a male branch and the other is female branch. And as we said, the male branch which is formed first is normally the male branch but after fertilization, the female branch which is on the side becomes erect and becomes the main branch. So here there are spirally arranged leaf like structures on both the branches and we will be drawing the head of one branch. So this is the male branch and we will talk about the structures which are seen at the tip. So if we enlarge this we find that the tip is convex, it is a bulging structure and all around it is supported or surrounded by large leaf like structures and these leaves they are known as perigonial leaves. So they surround it and because of these large leaves this structure becomes a depressed structure and in this convex part there are two structures which we find. One is the anthridium and we will enlarge these anthridia to see the detailed structure. Each anthridium as you can see has two parts. It has a narrow stalk with which it is attached here and a club like oval body. Now in between these anthridia there are some unbranched multicellular structure. These structures they are called paraphyses. Paraphyses. These paraphyses, they are unbranched, they are multicellular, and their tips are swollen. That means the cell which is present at the tip is swollen. All other cells are elongated. And these are in between these and media. So we would find many such paraphyses. These paraphyses, they are green and photosynthetic. So one more important thing that they are green in color and they perform photosynthesis. There are two more functions which are done by or performed by these paraphyses which we will take up in a minute. And this structure is the anthridium in which the male gamete or the sperm is going to develop. So there are many anthridia and there are paraphyses. Now if we draw the structure of this anthridium, we enlarge it, there are two parts. The part which is attached here is a multicellular part which is called the stalk and then there is this club shaped body. So this part is the stalk part and this is the body. Now the body part or the anthridia, if we are talking of this, it is green when it is young and when it matures, it becomes orange red. So it is orange red when it matures. So if you are seeing these green colored anthridia, that means it is still young. But if you see the reddish orange, then they are mature. They are green because of presence of chloroplast and they turn red orange when the chloroplast are replaced by chromoplast. Now this, this body, it has many polygonal cells which make the outer layer which we call the jacket. So this is completely surrounded by flag cells and this forms the jacket. So this is actually the cover. Now if you are looking at this anthridium from the top and everywhere we find cells, then the top is visible as if there are long cells, columnar cells 
and then this is the complete body and here we find all those polygonal cells. So these column like tall cells they make the operculum. So here we are going to make few tall cells. Their number is less and they make the operculum. It is a lid which is going to open and the male gametes would be released. Now inside here there are cells. So it is filled with cells and these cells are known as the androcytes. Each androcyte is going to get differentiated. That means here division is not taking place. Each cell is getting differentiated into a biflagellate sperm. So there are two flagella and this is a biflagellate sperm which is formed by the process of differentiation. So the number of male gametes or sperms would be same as the number of androcytes. Normally we say that the cells which gives rise to the gamete they undergo meiosis and that's how the haploid gametes are formed. But here these androcytes are also haploid and they give rise to the gametes. That means the complete gametophyte is a haploid plant. So this is our gametophyte and it is haploid. So all the cells are haploid, even the androcytes are haploid. They simply get differentiated and form the male gamete or the sperm. The male gamete or sperm is also known as antherozoid. So either antherozoid or the sperm. Now if we talk about these paraphyses again, these paraphyses they are multicellular and we have said that the topmost cell is circular and this is how they are seen, they are unbranched. They absorb water and because of this they prevent the anthridium from drying. So this helps in preventing the anthridium from drying. This is one function which is performed by paraphyses. The second function is they secrete mucilage and this mucilage helps in dehiscence. Dehiscence of anthridia. That means these are two functions which are performed by paraphyses. They are not directly helping in the process of reproduction. That means they do not help in gamete formation. And so we call them that these are sterile structures. Now in case of this gametophyte, one branch is going to produce the male gamete and the other branch is going to produce the female gamete. That means both the sex organs are developing on the same plant. But in case of Fumaria, it is protandrous. Protandrous means the male sex organs develop first. So this is an adaptation to ensure cross fertilization. Let us take this situation say from the male branch male sex organs and the female sex organs here they mature at the same time. The male gametes can swim here up to the female head. Fertilization can take place. That means here the genes are of the same plant. So there is no cross fertilization. But in order to favor cross fertilization, they are protagonists. That means the male branch will develop first, male gametes will be formed first and even if they swim up to the female branch, the egg or the female gamete is not ready yet. So the chances of self fertilization are minimized and cross fertilization would take place. Cross fertilization ensures mixing of genes and that is always better for adaptation and evolution. So this is the male head and this complete structure which is visible to us, this one. This is known as the male head or it is also known as perigonium. And there are many antheridia, many paraphyses, they are all compactly arranged. 
and these perigonial leaves they basically surround the entire structure for protection so now this is the male head and this is how the male gametes are going to get produced now in the next part we'll take up the female branch the female sex organ and